we have uh, another exciting pitch coming up for you from Megan McLeod. Uh, so Megan is uh, ready to go uh, and is also from uh, our Alliance for Water Stewardship and will be talking about bottom-up demand-side water management. So welcome, Megan. Thank you. Good morning, folks. And thanks for having me. And I'd like to join in acknowledging the traditional owners of the land as the first peoples of Australia. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and their connection to land, water and culture are enduring. We hope that together we can work towards treaty, reconciliation and prosperity. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with water stewardship, I'll preface that this is not a technological, engineering or regulatory solution but a lasting voluntary change management approach to wards holistic sustainable water use. You see, for decades, longer than I've been alive, <laughs> global water leaders have been calling for participatory and behaviour change approaches to sustainable water management. But not until fairly recently, has there been a robust and systematic way to involve the private sector and the world's biggest water users at a meaningful scale? Slide, please. But now, some of the world's largest brands and consumer goods companies, as well as um, small local businesses and landholders, have started to commit to, to help protect our planet's vital water resources with water stewardship. So what is water stewardship and what does it mean? Slide. Water stewardship is the use of water that is socially and culturally equitable, environmentally sustainable and economically beneficial. Catchment management and its cousin integrated water resource management are holistic approaches to guide us how to manage water sustainably but they are top-down approaches. With water stewardship, water users are empowered to take action, to contribute and participate in catchment management. These actions can be performed on site and off site in the wider catchment towards the outcomes of good water governance, sustainable water balance, good water quality, healthy, important water related areas and safe water and sanitation health for all. So what we're looking for here is not just water efficiency, but holistic, responsible water management by those that use it most. To explain a bit more, here's a brief recap or so of water stewardship in Asia Pacific. Water stewardship was conceptualized by Australians in the 2000s as a response to the devastating millennium drought. Industry across Southern Australia were facing severe and unprecedented physical and reputational water risks. In 2008, Water Stewardship Australia was formed and along with the Pacific Institute and the Nature Conservancy founded the Global Alliance for Water Stewardship or AWS. In April 2014, following a four-year global multi-stakeholder development process, the first AWS International Water Stewardship Standard was launched with the support of the United Nations CEO Water Mandate. In 2015, Ingham's Somerville plant became the first site in Australia and the second site in the world to be certified against the AWS standard after Ecolab's Taikang site in China. 2018, and Ingham's and the Renmark Irrigation Trust became the first two sites in the world to achieve platinum certification, demonstrating exemplary water practices and continual improvement. In 2019, the Australian Water Partnership continued to support the growth of water stewardship in China, Indonesia and Southeast Asia through a second phase of its Indo-Pacific Water Stewardship Program. This has helped us to build partnerships with local and national governments, civil society organisations and prominent brands such as Apple, Ecolab, Unilever and others. We now have 79 AWS certified sites worldwide and another 119 registered to become certified. So how does it work? 
Well, to support global awareness and uptake of water stewardship, the AWS standard is completely open source and free to download and use. As a not-for-profit, we, AWS Asia Pacific, support sites in their water stewardship journey through training, advisory, networking, and membership, and we reinvest all our proceeds back into promoting water stewardship in our region. Once sites are confident in their water stewardship performance, they may choose to seek third-party verification and certification against the AWS standard, from which we attract a small levy. Partners and promoters, public and private, support water stewardship through program funding, membership, training, and impact investing. So what have we achieved? Well, in China, Water stewardship is supporting catchment management and the SDGs by empowering action, collaboration and continual improvement by major water users at scale. For example, with multiple sites working together, 156 Apple microelectronics supplier sites have collectively saved 34 gigalitres of fresh water in 2019 with a water reuse rate of 40%. Five sites are water stewardship certified and three have achieved platinum level. There are another 13 Apple supplier sites registered for AWS certification in 2020. Dialing into Kunshan City, one of China's largest industrial economies, and the Kunshan City government is providing 100,000 RMB incentive grants for industrial sites to adopt water stewardship. This is to help manage the impact of the government's 263 action plan, which reflects their regulatory approach and the cracking down on industrial pollution. The water stewardship incentive aims to support both the industrial economy and improved water outcomes in the catchment by supporting sites to improve their water use at a site level and at scale in the city. So far, eight sites in Kunshan are AWS certified and 10 are registered for certification. For an exemplary example of water stewardship in the Murray-Darling Basin, make sure to stay on the line next for James John's presentation from the Remark Irrigation Trust. So we, AWS Asia Pacific, are a not-for-profit charity registered with the ACNC. We're a membership-based organisation and governed by a board of directors elected by our members. There are eight of us in the operational team based in Australia and China, and we work with our country partner in Indonesia as well as other partners around the world in Europe, North America, Latin America, Southeast Asia, and Africa. As a multi-stakeholder organization, we work with a variety and breadth of organizations from government, civil society, and the private sector, who all have the common vision and mission to ignite and nurture global and local leadership incredible water stewardship that recognises and secures the social, cultural, environmental and economic value of fresh water. But what can water stewardship mean for you? Well, depending who you are, local government and catchment managers, how do you support better industry practice in your catchment? Maybe water stewardship can help. Impact investors, how do you define your impact indicators around water? Maybe the water stewardship standard can help. Development partners. How do you mobilise private sector engagement, investment and action on water? Maybe water stewardship can help. And industry. How do your water management practices compare to the AWS standard? Are you being recognised for your good water performance? Speak with me about how water stewardship can support your sustainability goals and objectives, and I look forward to meeting you. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks, Megan.